someone who has never served a day in Canada's armed forces, who murdered someone, was convicted of murder, is receiving benefits from Veterans Affairs Canada for PTSD that he incurred during murdering um, his victim. I don't know about you, but I think that's pretty disgusting and wrong. This is the case that I'm referring to is a Christopher Garnier who uh, murdered a police officer, a female police officer, um, desecrated her body and somehow is able to get benefits from Veterans Affairs Canada. I mean, there are a lot of veterans in Canada who have fought for our country who are having a difficult time receiving similar benefits. And this guy is receiving benefits apparently because his, uh, his dad was, had a connection to the armed forces. Uh, I, I don't think that this is right and this needs to be rectified. Our, our party, our party leader, my colleagues have been holding the government to account on this for some period of time, but today took the cake. And I just, before I show you the clips of what happened in question period today, I just, I just wanna give you a warning that it's, it's really disgusting what happened in question period today. I'll start with the clip that started it all, my colleague, um, John Brassard asking the Prime Minister directly if he thought that this man should receive benefits. Watch the Prime Minister's response and then watch what happened when myself and many of my other colleagues attempted to follow up on this disgraceful answer. Christopher Garnier killed police officer Catherine Campbell in Truro, Nova Scotia and was found guilty of murder. He said committing the murder gave him PTSD. Garnier never served a day in, of his life in Canadian military, yet the Prime Minister stood in this House yesterday and justified Veterans Affairs paying for Garnier's benefits, saying, when a man or woman serves in Canada's armed forces or in the RCMP, their whole family serves with them. Mr. Speaker, does the Prime Minister actually believe that Chris Garnier should be receiving benefits from Veterans Affairs? The Honourable Prime Minister. Once again, Mr. Speaker, we see that the Conservatives just don't get it when it comes to caring for our veterans uh, or the members of uh, the armed, uh, of uh, our RCMP. They nickeled and dimed those veterans. They cut veterans' offices. Uh, they cut benefits, and they wrap themselves in the flag every chance they get. We're taking a serious approach that actually does ensure that we are supporting the families of those serving officers, because we know that an entire family serves a alongside an officer, uh, a serving member. When it comes uh, to this particular tragic, terrible case, uh, we will— Honourable member for Barry Innisfil. Mr. Speaker, we're talking about a decision by the Liberal government to pay for the benefits of a convicted killer with money from Veterans Affairs when he's never served a single minute in Canada's military. If a serving member is found guilty of murder and dishonorably discharged, they and their family would lose all their benefits. Yeah. For the sake of all those who served honorably and continue to fight Veterans Affairs for the benefits they earned, will the Prime Minister commit today to stop paying the benefits of this cop killer? Yeah. Right, Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, we see once again that there is nothing the Conservatives won't stoop to to play politics with tragedies. I will not answer that question. He knows Hill. Minister talks about wow. standing up for the rights of victims. Earlier in question period, the Prime Minister said point blank that he wouldn't answer a question. He wouldn't answer a question. And yet Christopher Garnier, who has never served a day in his life in Canada's military, who killed a female police officer and unceremoniously dumped her body under a bridge, is getting benefits from Veterans Affairs. The Prime Minister needs to have the courage to stand up and answer this question right now. Does he believe that Christopher Garnier should be receiving benefits from Veterans Affairs? The Honourable Minister of Veterans Affairs. Our hearts go out to the family of Constable Campbell, 
I always have to say this, I never like saying it, but it's important, and for privacy reasons, I can't get into the case. But I made it very clear, and I think many people in this House made it very clear, how uncomfortable they were with this whole situation. I've asked the Department to go back and provide me with a better understanding of how this decision was made. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the Prime Minister won't answer, and the Minister of Veterans Affairs just told this House that he's asked his officials for answers. But the Minister already promised veterans answers three weeks ago. To be clear, that murderer killed her, put her body in a compost bin, and dumped her under a bridge. Does the Prime Minister really believe that this cop killer deserves benefits from Veterans Affairs? Honourable Minister of Veterans Affairs. Thank you, Honourable Member, for the question. And once again, I, you know, I will, I will say that uh, there are many of us who are uncomfortable with the decision that was made. One thing I will not back down on, though, and I do believe firmly, is that we will look after not just the veteran, but the family members of the veteran. Now, in this case, I have asked that the Department go back and review the decision for me to look at. Thank you for the question. Thank you. Member for Lakeland. The Prime Minister needs to answer the question, and the Minister needs to stop covering for him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Garnier never served a day of his left. life in Canada's military, but is receiving benefits from Veterans Affairs. Yesterday and today, the Prime Minister justified those payments. Does the Prime Minister actually believe that murderer should be receiving benefits from Veterans Affairs? They're the decision makers. Uh, the Honourable Minister of Veterans Affairs. Minister, my answer stands, but uh, let me take advantage of this opportunity because there was something that came out in this story to talk about PTSD and that this was depriving people of PTSD with their rightful place to get treatment. And let me assure this House that is never the fact. If you raise your hand and you need treatment for PTSD, you will receive that treatment in 96 percent of cases. In fact, we don't even wait for approval. We will make sure they receive mental health care right away. If you need help, Put your hand up, and we will be there for you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you much, Mr. Speaker. To the minister, Christopher Garnier claims he got PTSD because he killed a police officer. That's, right. That's the issue here, Mr. Speaker. Now, again, the Prime Minister continues to dodge the question. Veterans Affairs gave benefits to that convicted cop killer. Garnier never served a day in the Canadian Armed Forces in his life, but yet he is collecting benefits while he serves time in prison. Does the Prime Minister Speaker actually believe that Chris Garnier should be receiving benefits from Veterans Affairs Canada? Yeah. Honourable Minister of Veterans Affairs. Speaker, I'm not going to take this any further other than to say there are privacy, privacy issues around this case, and I don't want to take it any further. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, Christopher Garnier he brutally killed police officer Catherine Campbell in Truro, Nova Scotia. He was found guilty of murder. He never served a day of his life in Canada's military. Yet the Prime Minister, the leader of our country, keeps justifying Veterans Affairs paying for Garnier's benefits. Mr. Speaker, this is, this is sickening. Does this Prime Minister actually believe that Chris Garnier should be receiving benefits from Veterans Affairs? Please do what's right. The Honourable Minister of Veterans Affairs. I thank the Honourable Member for his question. And once again, I have asked my officials to go back to review the judgment and to come back to me with that review. Thank you very much for the question. Order. Mr. Speaker, here's what we know in this House today. The Prime Minister will not stand up and answer the question about the murder. The murderer who's collecting benefits that are targeted for veterans, not someone who's not served in the military, a 30-year-old healthy individual who decided to commit murder on an innocent woman, threw her under a bridge. This minister promised three and a half weeks ago to dig into this matter and find out what's going on. Three and a half weeks. How long does it take to get an answer from Adam Campbell's family? Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, I stood in this House and answered the first time the question was asked. But as the level of debate sunk, as the level of uh, political games uh, got torqued up by the Conservatives around a terrible, tragic, uh, reprehensible incident, 
uh, I chose not to encourage them. Mr. Speaker, at one point, Canadians uh, are going to help the Conservatives understand that they should not play these disgusting political games the way they are doing. Mr. Speaker. The Prime Minister started off question period by saying he wouldn't answer a question. The answer he just gave my colleague was disgusting. A woman was murdered by somebody who did not serve a day in Canada's military, and he is receiving better benefits from Veterans Affairs. This Prime Minister needs to stand up and be accountable for his values. Does he believe, honestly, that a murderer who has never served a day in Canada's military should be receiving PTSD benefits from Veterans Affairs. Yeah. The Honourable Minister of Veterans Affairs. Mr. Speaker, out of respect for the family of Constable Campbell, can we simply let this debate rest for now? I have asked my officials to review the decision. I have asked them to get back to me. Can we please let it rest there? Between the Prime Minister saying that he wouldn't answer this question, uh, between the Veterans Affairs Minister failing to have an answer for this question, and, and we asked this yesterday, we asked this weeks ago, weeks ago, and he wasn't prepared to have an answer. And, and then the worst of it was the Prime Minister's um, deflections with some pretty um, disgusting rhetoric. You know, the, the only answer to that question was no, he should not be receiving benefits. That is the only answer to that question. I mean, that is what the Prime Minister should have done, is just stood up and said no. He should not be receiving benefits, and I will be rectifying that situation. I, I can't see any possible other answer in any situation uh, for so many reasons. If you have a minute today and you were as disturbed as I was about what happened there, pick a Liberal MP, pick someone who's on the Veterans Affairs Committee, pick anybody and, and, and phone them, pick up the phone. And if you've never phoned an MP, do it today and just say, no, he shouldn't be receiving benefits. We will continue to push on this issue to ensure that it is fixed. But at this point in time, um, ugh, we need your help. Working hard for you in Ottawa. Have a great day.